Hello, boys and girls. I was so excited to get to see some of you during our parade today. I saw Mason. Hi, Mason. I saw Braylon. I saw Ella. I saw Keegan. I got to see so many second graders, and I was so excited about it. So thank you all for making all of your signs, and thank you for coming out to see us. Um, tomorrow starts spring break, so I want you all to take this time to relax, get caught up on any videos or packets that you may have, and when we come back, uh, my videos are going to go along with what you're doing in your packets, and it'll be nonfiction skills. One more nonfiction skill that we've already done is talk about text features, and text features are our visuals that go along with what we're reading. So I have this book called Women in Science, 50 Fearless Pioneers Who Changed the World. It's kind of similar to my Girls Think of Everything book. And if I open up to the beginning of this book, there is this text feature. And at the very top, it says contents. So we know that this is our table of contents that we've talked about before. And it has the names of each woman that I can read about in this book. The one that I'm going to read about is Hetty Lamar. So her name is Hetty Lamar. She was an inventor and she was an actress. So um, on this page, there are illustrations of Hetty. There are um, captions that go along with what I'm going to be reading about. And when we're finished, we're going to talk about some of them. Okay, Hetty Lamar. You may already know that Hetty Lamar was an actress during Hollywood's golden age, who was called the most beautiful woman in the world. But unbeknownst to most, she was also a genius inventor. Hetty was born Hedwig Eva Marie Kessler in 1914 in Vienna, Austria. She dreamed of being an actress and made it a reality. When her controlling millionaire husband, Fritz Mendel, wanted to put an end to her acting career, she left him and fled to Paris and later London. There, she met Louis B. Mayer, a big-time film producer who later gave her an acting contract from MGM and a new name. Hetty had a secret workshop where she tinkered with inventions. During World War II, the National Inventors Council asked civilians, that means people not in the military, to submit ideas. Hetty invented a problem, didn't invent a problem, she identified. Hetty identified a problem she thought she could fix. The U.S. Navy's radio-guided torpedoes were easy to signal jam, which caused them to go off course. At a dinner party, she met George, an avant-garde composer. Together, they realized a radio signal could change frequencies using the same technology a piano player uses to change notes. The signal would be impossible to jam. Hetty was so excited, she wrote her number in lipstick on his car window and immediately got to work. Working together, they developed the Frequency Hopping Spread Spectrum. She received a patent in 1942, but the U.S. military shelved her idea. Disheartened but still patriotic, Hetty used her fame to raise million of millions of dollars in war bonds. It wasn't until the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962 that the military realized FHSS was a gold mine. That was her invention. Hetty's technology was used to control torpedoes and communication. It, especially, it was especially useful for communication between multi-electronical devices. It's the foundation for the technology we now use every day with our smartphones. So GPS, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth devices. Although the patent had expired by the time it was used, Hattie won many awards while she was alive and was inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame in 2014, 14 years after her death. So without Hattie Lamar, we would not even be talking right now, boys and girls, because GPS, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all of that wouldn't exist without her first inventing that device. So she, um, if we look at the pictures on this page, it has other little things that she did in the sides underneath little the illustrations and then they have the captions that talk about the illustration. So some of those say she tinkered with a new traffic light and a better tissue box. She received the Electronic Frontier Foundation Award. She starred in films with Clark Gable, Spencer Tracy, and Jimmy Stewart. And I know you all are probably too young to know who those people are, but a lot of um, really famous movies had those people in there. Uh, she...
She has a quote here that says, My father made me understand that I must make my own decisions, mold my own character, and think my own thoughts. So she was a pretty interesting lady. And down in the uh, description box, I'll put a link to a little some more information about her. And there's actually a documentary about her called Bombshell that um, I haven't watched yet, but I plan to watch. And your parents might be interested in that if they want to know more about Hetty Lamar. All right. So those are um, some of our text features that we've talked about before. In the back of the book, if you can tell me the two text features that we usually find in the back of the book, I'll be really impressed. One starts with a G. What is it? The glossary. If you said the glossary, then you are right. So throughout this book, there are a lot of scientific terms. So there is a glossary with all of those science terms. And then there's another one that starts with an I. Do you remember what it was? The index. The index. And remember, the index tells us all of the topics that are in the book and what page numbers those those topics can be found on. So for example, if I wanted to read more about t -t 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 Sally Ride, who was a famous astronaut, her story is on page 115. So I would turn to page 115. All right. I hope that you all enjoyed that story from me today. I hope that you all relax over spring break and I will get back to you with some more nonfiction skills for us to work on. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye.